Hello and welcome to episode 24 of our unofficial SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is January 14th and together with Gore and Robert, we're here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello everyone. Hi. Hi. So in today's episode, we take a closer look at Logic Apps. In previous episodes, we already used Logic Apps, but Today, I have the huge pleasure to welcome David Burke, one of the developers in the Logic Apps team, who will show us some very new things or some so introduce us to some interesting things with, with Logic Apps. But before we go to David, let's quickly look at the news from, from this week. So I quickly want to sh start um, basically continuing the things um, that we talked about in our last episode where we talked about Azure DevOps and the whole um, CI CD pipeline. And obviously SAP also has a um, continuous integration and delivery functionality on the SAP Cloud Platform. Um, one of the things that they just added is the functionality to connect to GitHub repositories that are actually also um, living on-prem. So um, there, there is some new information and they already promised that there will be additional tutorials and some um, yeah more content on this, but I think that's quite interesting. If you're running, for example, GitHub um, on-premise, GitHub Enterprise on on-premise, then now you can also connect your SAP Cloud Platform continuous integration and delivery functionality to this GitHub repository. Another thing that I want to highlight, um, Christian Lechner has created another um, really nice blog about um, using side-by-side -side extension. Um, with Kima and um, Microsoft Azure. So um, if you know Christian, then you probably know that he's very active when it comes to um, Azure Functions and how Azure Functions can connect to an SAP system. And you might also know that um, he's very active currently in getting to know um, Kima. So he has this um, session, this video session where he um, learns Kima and where he provides a lot of very, very good content there. And now he's basically bringing a, a lot of things together. He has a, um, a scenario that he's looking at, so a really a business scenario basically. And then um, in this block, which is again, very detailed with lots of step-by-step -step, um, uh, yeah, descriptions of, of how to reproduce this whole thing. Um, yeah, you, you can really follow this and um, get it working. So I think it's definitely, a very interesting blog um, that you should check out. Can you tell me shortly what is Kima is? Oh, Kima is the runtime um, from SAP. So, so um, uh, SAP Cloud Platform contains out of uh, three runtimes, I think. Obviously, there's the Cloud Foundry runtime, there's Steampunk, so the ABAP runtime, and then there's also a Kubernetes-based runtime, a managed Kubernetes environment, and that's basically what what um, Kima is. Oh, okay. So um, it's also available on the SAP Cloud Platform trial environment. So you can just go there, um, uh, deploy it there, and then you have a managed um, Kubernetes runtime from from SAP available. Okay. It's pretty nice. It had some some nice connectors, um, messaging integration, and, and stuff like that. So um, if you're looking for for SAP related integrations, I think that's that's a pretty nice environment. The next thing that I quickly want to talk about is um, Power Virtual Agents. So as part of the um, Power Platform, there's this um, bot framework um, available that allows you to create yeah, bots and there's an integration in Teams. And now there's also single sign-on um, available in Teams or, or for Power Virtual Agents, which means you log obviously onto Teams, but in the past now, when you when you created the Power Virtual Agent, well, there was a um, disconnect between the user that was signed in in Teams and the user that is signed in the Power Virtual Agent. But now there's um, single sign-on in, in public preview available. So I think this can also be a very interesting um, scenario. And again, obviously very much in the context of SAP, if you then think of extending or, or connecting from Power Virtual Agents to your SAP, environment i think um this this there, there will be some some very interesting um scenarios that will really show the whole end-to-end -end flow from teams power virtual agents um to the sap system then only 
two more announcements. Um, so on January 27th, um, there's a Visual Studio Code Day. And I, I think, I mean, a lot of people already are using Visual Studio Code. Um, look at SAP, I mean, the business application studio that they have to, to develop um, applications is also based more or less or can can leverage the same um, add-ins as, as Visual Studio Code. So I think this can be a, a really interesting um, event. I, I don't know all the details, but it sounds like um, there's uh, some some really good speakers, some really good content um, that will talk in general about Visual Studio Code. So I think that's that's definitely also worth um, checking out. The last thing that I want to mention are the um, DSAC Technology Days. Um, so actually, in yeah, almost a little more than two weeks, um, um, the DSAC, the German-speaking SAP user group, um, will have their technology event. So they always have um, two events, um, one for more the business users, I would say, and one for um, the technologists, the architects, the, the developers. And the technology days, they will yeah, uh, um, happen on February 3rd and 4th. And it's again a virtual event, obviously, but I think that's definitely worth checking out. From a keynote perspective, um, Jürgen Müller um, will have um, um, a keynote. Um, Steffen Peach, um, who's the technology head of the technology um, uh, area or working group, and then Achim Junglas from Munich Re, uh, yeah, will will have keynotes. So I think this this was definitely something that will be also um, quite interesting. Good. So um, <clears throat> with this quick um, look back. I would actually like to hand over to to David and maybe also to Divya. Maybe both of you can quickly introduce yourself. Um, but then, David, I, I would really like to um, open up for you so so you can show us the wonderful things that we can do with Logic Apps. Thank you, Olga. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm David. I'm the main engineer on the uh, SAP Connector for Azure Logic App. Azure uh, Logic App is this um, cloud service offering for uh, integration for the uh, enterprise on-premise and uh, in the cloud. Divya? Hey, everyone. Uh, excited to be here. I'm Divya. Uh, I am uh, the peer uh, PM uh, working with David, working on SAP integrations and uh, looking forward to everything that David has to share today. Perfect. All right, so I have a little presentation today as well as uh, a demo for you. <clears throat> so obviously, uh, I am talking about uh, Azure Logic App for SAP, the uh, connector. Um, first, a few words about uh, Logic App. So Logic App is uh, one of the services in Azure integration services alongside with Service Bus, API Management, and Event Grid. Uh, together, those services provide a complete solution for integration, both on cloud and uh, for, for cloud and on-premise applications. Um, and we are really trying to um, meet uh, the customer where they are on the uh, integration need. And we provide the framework, the services, and the tool that allows you to do this uh, integration. And uh, one thing that is a, a, a bit more modern than some of the previous offering is that we are really trying to move at the speed of business and the providing quick solution to where uh, business IT needs to integrate different services in the, uh, in the enterprise realm with a rapid development, no code or low code, a level of productivity, an elective, elastic scale so you can meet the demand at the same time, we have a uh, pay-as-you-go type of pricing model available so that you can reduce your uh, IT spending when you explore a new area and you don't have yet the volume to justify a high investment. So you can pay up to the uh, granular action that you are taking, uh, the granular API call, and then you can scale up to a very large volume. And uh, you mentioned earlier uh, visual code. We actually have uh, a VS Code extension for Logic App, so we're integrating that tool, as well as we have an online visual designer that as you can see from the uh, presentation sample on the right, you can easily 
uh, put some action and chain them and put some logic and take token from one to the other. And we'll have part that as part of the demo uh, on the uh, specific use for uh, logic for SAP integration. Now, SAP is by far not the only uh, service that we integrate with. There are actually over 300 connectors to all kinds of uh, application, messaging, event services, and so on, um, so that you can uh, start to do this integration with a broad range of IT services. Now, before I go on the specific of the uh, SAP connector for Logic App, uh, I want to uh, clarify something that sometimes confuse people, um, that yes, this connector is for the traditional uh, integration over IFC with SAP, the, the basic uh, uh, traditional uh, communication protocol of SAP, and then it enables BAPI and IDOX as well. Um, that doesn't mean that's the only option that you have available to integrate between SAP and Logica, right? Uh, SAP is promoting more modern uh, REST-based integration, and that is actually the native integration capability of Logica. Natively, Logica speaks REST and JSON, um, so that you can uh, emit and receive JSON's payload. You can specify what is the schema for that, so that you have the tokens available. You can use, if you have them, open API definition to import them into Logic App and they have a more first year experience for this integration. So all of that is also possible with Logic App and between SAP and Logic App. Um, after the, in the history, after the availability of IFCs and before REST, there was a sort of time where SOAP was very popular uh, integration with SAP. And that again is supported in uh, Logic App, the support for SOAP based integration with uh, a SOAP to race, a REST uh, uh, connector, which allows you both to do a pass through where you form your own SOAP uh, payload, or you have a SOAP to REST uh, custom connector where you provide a WSDL and we build for you the capability to translate from the SOAP XML to a REST payload back and forth. Right? Um, and uh, on top of that, not only can you speak to three different protocols, you can also do it whether your SAP instance is in the cloud or whether it is on-premise. And today I will actually do an integration with an on-premise SAP where we use the on-premise data gateway to talk from Logic App to SAP. The more on the specific of the connector that I am demonstrating today, as I mentioned earlier, this is one that is based on AFC, which then would enable also BAPI, BAPI methods, and IDOT integration. This is a bidirectional connector, meaning that you can talk from Logic App to SAP and receive a response back from SAP. But you can also initiate the, the connection from uh, SAP to Logic App and have SAP call Logic App over an IFC and get a response payload back to uh, SAP. You know, some of the more advanced capabilities that you have available with this connector. Um, for security conscious uh, enterprises, you can use SNC with a certificate. Uh, for ABAC programmers that have uh, more complex types of integration at the application level, you can have stateful sessions so that you can do things like committing your BAPI call, or you can chain multiple BAPI calls that have dependencies and commit that as a unit. Uh, and uh, this is a connector in which we are actively developing new, capa new capabilities. So uh, in the coming semester, we are working on support for SNC for ICE, which is a dedicated offering uh, for large enterprises. And uh, we are also working on stateful IFC calls so that you can also make uh, chain transaction chains uh, with uh, IFCs. And I quickly just want to want to highlight one one thing that that you mentioned there. And um, what I think is really interesting is this bi-directional SAP integration. So that not only from Logic Apps you can call the SAP system, but you can also really trigger um, events or, or processes obviously in the SAP system, and from there um, trigger Logic Apps process. I think that's that's really something that is um, very interesting for a lot of customers. Yes, thank you, Holger. Let me uh, switch to presentation here. So um, to explain a little bit how the integration happened between Logic App Service in Azure and uh, your SAP system, uh, which by the way, may be the traditional ECC or the more recent S4HANA. 
Typically, those systems are in a private network, so you need to establish a link between those two. Um, Logic App itself is using uh, cloud services, um, which are the, uh, the connectors and the um, gateway discovery system. And then on the uh, private network, you would uh, install the uh, OPDG, the on-premise data gateway software in a virtual machine alongside with the SAP.NET connector, sometimes referred in short as NCO, right? And uh, this on-premise data gateway server will act both as the IFC client to talk to SAP, as well as it can register as an IFC server so that uh, now you have a program ID available in uh, your SAP system that you can make uh, IFC calls to, or you can configure an IDOC partner, a logical system, that you then send to that IFC uh, server, the IDOCs. And so uh, when you're talking from Logic App to SAP, Logic App will call the cloud service. The cloud service will find the on-premise data gateway. This is, by the way, using a service bus uh, relay to connect between the two. There is a publicly available architectural, architectural document about the on-premise data gateway, so we can understand how it's set up. And the on-premise data gateway will load the uh, SAP Enco library, create the IFC client, and then send that uh, request uh, to SAP. David, one question. What about security in that direction? You provide several steps. So is there any kind of SSO where I can enable that or? You can, enable, okay. you can enable SSO with uh, the SNC. Um, in okay. SAP World for IFC, SSO is enabled in SNC. And you can uh, use for the account, the service account that is running on from data gate, where you can use SSO uh, in order to uh, identify yourself with uh, the SAP system. Uh, in which case, you would no longer need a username and password because that ID would come here. You can also, with SNC, you have the possibility to layer on the different uh, capabilities where you request both to have that uh, SSO sign-on for the service itself. And on top of that, you can request a uh, username and password as well as part of the connection that you establish with uh, SAP. Now, here we're talking about securing that link between the virtual machine and the uh, SAP system. There are also the two links here that are entirely over HTTPS, so all communication is always encrypted. Um, and I will make note also that uh, Logic App data at rest is encrypted. We have encryption on all of the storage. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, we are securing all of the credentials that you are sharing. They are uh, encrypted at rest. They are encrypted as we go through them. And we are further using when we load those uh, secrets in memory to establish a connection. We are using secure strings um, to reduce the exposure of your secrets as much as possible. So yes, we, we do take security uh, very seriously at every uh, point of this integration. Sure, thank you. You're welcome. Now, uh, the other uh, integration is when you want uh, SAP to call uh, SAP, uh, Logic App, and this goes through this IFC server that is registered to SAP. For Logic App, this is going to be actually a webhook. So this link uh, doesn't have to stay open. It is on demand. When um, SAP issues a call to the IFC server, an HTTP client will open a secure connection uh, to Logic App and uh, notify of the payload that is there with a possible option when you are using an IFC of a back, you can provide a response payload that goes back from the IFC server to the uh, SAP system. Great. Maybe just one word about the on-premises data gateway, because I think obviously this is a very crucial component here. I think if you look at the world of SAP and um, SAP and the SAP Cloud Platform, then just for comparison, um, SAP has something that is called the SAP Cloud Connector. So a similar thing that you install on premise, and then the SAP Cloud Connector connects to or establishes the connection to the SAP Cloud Platform, or actually the other way around. And I think that's exactly the way how the OData um, on-premises data gateway works. So. Obviously, the private network has a firewall, so, so there, there's no outgoing traffic, 
but the, uh, sorry, sorry, no incoming um, traffic, but especially because of this architecture, um, the OD or the on-premises data gateway makes the call outside, establishes basically the tunnel. So then logic apps can leverage this tunnel to connect back to the to the SAP system. So that means that this uh, gateway is good candidate for central hub, and I can use it one gateway for multiple systems, or I need to have for every system one new gateway. You can use one gateway for multiple systems. Okay. Um, and it is also the gateway that you can use with SPA Automate. You can use it with SPA BI yep. for a range of other uh, integration. Ah, um, now, one caveat I would mention is that the uh, IFC client in SAP has a limited number of connections that it can establish at once. Um, so if you have a very large number of clients that are connecting, there are some point in which you make, need to make a decision to scale out your mm -hmm. on-premise data gateway um, based on the number of connections that you allow for your IFC clients to your SAP system, which is also configurable. Um, that's all documented in um, SAP notes. Uh, if you, I think by default, it's 200 connections that they allow to have concurrently open. Um, but I know for some of our customers that have very a large SAP integration that sometimes get into uh, to that limit, um, especially when they do uh, a high bandwidth uh, IFC server mm -hmm. that uses multiple ports by itself. And in such case, you can start deploying additional on-premise data gateway so that you uh, increase the bandwidth available between the gateway and the SAP system. Mm -hmm. Thanks, yeah. Okay. And so now let's move on to the uh, the demo I've prepared for today. And so this is the uh, logic app we're going to rebuild. I have one built here, but I wanted to show also how uh, quickly this can be done uh, to get to a little bit of that uh, understanding by experience of uh, how easy it is to build that, right? So I go to create a new resource. I'm going to create a logic app. name it's going to run some uh, validation i also have ready some uh, sample payload and this is a public github um, that uh, you will be able to use later it has samples for idox it has samples for um, bapi cards for ifc cards um, and on the left we can see there is a creation of a new logic app is in progress it's deploying the uh, ARM resource behind the scene, and within a short amount of time, that logic app will be available for us to edit the content in that visual designer that I mentioned uh, before. See, it's already available. <clears throat> and there are a few templates that are available here. Um, there is even a template for SAP for receive, um, but we're not going to demonstrate that one today. Today, I'm going to do a simple uh, HTTP uh receive request and then you have you get an ad, uh, http uri um that you can call uh, to trigger the logic app oh, for some reason my machine froze mm -hmm. okay uh, right, there we go <laughs> right and um let me first demonstrate uh, sending a flat file IDOC uh, with the generic uh, send message to uh, SAP. And you have a couple of fields to provide. You want to specify what the action is. So we want to send an IDOC. And it's loading all of the possible IDOC types here, which is a fairly long list. Now, what I want to do is I want to do a generic send IDOC flat file, which is the one at the very end of the list. And here I have a sample payload on this GitHub um, that we're simply going to use. And you can see the concept of flat file, right? This is just the positional uh, type of IDOC. IDOC, and this is the uh, the data record. And there's a control record. Sorry, the yeah, there's a control record and a data record in that. Uh, and it's wrapped in a very thin XML envelope. And so I'm simply going to use that as my uh, input payload. David, one, one quick comment before you go there, uh, before you continue, sorry for interrupting. Um, 
I mean, obviously you had already established the connection to the SAP system, right? Um, that's why you yes. you could look up all these available BAPIs or RFCs. Um, so, so that's already done. Yes, yes, uh, that's right. Uh, thank you for mentioning that, uh, Holger. Uh, I, I wanted to avoid going to um, yeah. the extent of going through that, but you can see here this mentioned the gateway. Um, yeah. That is the on-premise data gateway system that I have installed on my machine to make the link. Because my machine is part of a corporate network, so that's where we have a demonstration SAP system, and uh, it's registered for use into uh, Logic App, right? Um, sure. and, and we could do a demo uh, at some point of going to the installation steps for the setup um, too. Uh, where if we were adding a new connection, then we may need to identify which is the connection we're using. And then you would have the typical SAP IFC connection information, the client, username, password, whether, by the way, you support both application server and message server, or also known as group. Uh, authentication uh, connect type of connection, and then either you provide the details for your uh, application <laughs> server or for your message server. That is also SNC. where you provide the details, yes, for SNC, right? And you have uh, SNC with certificate, uh, as well as you have the um, and my name and partner name and what kind of SNC you want to do, right? So perfect. There is a ton of options for uh, connecting to uh, SAP, and we support a fairly broad range. Uh, of it. Great, and, thank you, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. So now, um, this is actually enough to, uh, to send a flat file, and for clarity, I'm just going to clarify what it is. We're sending a flat file ad hoc orders five to, uh, to SAP is what this command is doing. And at this point, I can save and I can run this logic app. And we have sent an item. It's going to take a few uh, seconds to uh, load that run. And we're done, right? This is it. We, we, we've sent nice. the item. Now, uh, let me expand because uh, you may not have your IDOC in a flat file format. There are different types of IDOCs that we support as well. So I go back to editing my logic app. Again, I want to do SAP. And this time, let me use the more recent um, dedicated send IDOC uh, command. And we're going to use, oh, sorry, I forgot one thing. I'm going to also, for this, for this one, which is going to be XML based, I'm going to generate the schema for that uh, IDOC. So again, oh, I click at the wrong place. Okay. Oh, I'm struggling a bit with the focus is not collaborating with me today. So I can't click that no. Let me, let's hope this time. Nope. Okay, so uh, demo goes are not uh, helping me, but uh, let me show. Maybe the browser zoom, maybe um, uh, go back yes. to 100% zoom in the browser. Probably the, the browser zoom. Is creating uh, an issue there. It's an interesting um, point that we will take to a designer folks. Yep, you were right, Holger. That specific control is having issues with the Zoom. And so um, now uh, we know we want to send an, an orders document and to <laughs> scroll down to orders. Orders, I want to browse. Oh, no, we click too fast. Okay. I want to order five. Hey, let's take the latest version of orders and I want to send it to uh, SAP. Um, this will allow us to uh, generate the schema. Now, what I'm at here, um, because I already have a sample payload, this is also a searchable drop down for the more modern one, so I can just type and easily select which one I want to set. It's right. automatically going to select the, the latest, so that's fine. And in the sample payload, here I have a sample IDOC with the uh, Microsoft namespace, which is what schema we generate. So I can simply um, copy paste that in the right field. And we will be able to send that IDOC. 
Um, what we hear, let me do a second uh, version of that because SAP also has uh, an XML schema for IDOX and we support also <laughs> this uh, out of the box uh, native schema from SAP. So if I take the orders of five again, but this time I take an XML that you may be familiar with other um, integration product and with SAP itself, which have this IDOC and begin one type of format. So I can also use that format of uh, IDOC and send it to SAP. Now, I want to do a little more than just sending the uh, IDOC to SAP. I want to figure out what's happening with my IDOC. How has it been processed? So we recently added some additional capabilities um, out of box to uh, get the list of IDOC for transaction, right? Because IDOC has sent over a TIFC connection. And so you get an identifier for that uh, TIFC connection. This one will be uh, received by SAP. Mm -hmm. And the transaction ID is available. See the um, designer automatically detect the type I would need for input for transaction ID and says, hey, I'm looking at the output of the previous action. And for the send uh, ID, like I see you have a transaction ID. So this is probably what you want. And the designer is right. That is what I want. Now, once I get the IDOC list with the IDOC numbers, I want to know what happened to those IDOC numbers. So I'm going to ask for the IDOC status from the number. Again, I need to provide the numbers. So this time we can see the output of the get IDOC list is the IDOC number that seems to be the only one compatible for that. So I'll select this. And here a little bit of magic has happened. What the designer has realized is that the output from SAP for getting IDOC list based on a transaction is actually an array. So it automatically wraps my get IDOC status in a forage enumeration that we go yeah. through the array and extract the individual IDOC numbers. And this will get us a status. Now the status, and this is the last step we're going to do, the status happens to be a number. And if you don't know what the number means, it can be a little tricky. Um, but there is an SAP cable, uh, TDES, that um, describe what the fields mean um, and we have a, the read an SAP table capability out of the box. Yeah, let me check if I type that name properly because it did not uh, retrieve the, oh yes, I typed the name of the table wrong. It's the TDS2, so it could not read the fields. And now I type it properly, so this time it can read the field. And I do want to see the description of those. <laughs> And I will do some a little bit of advanced uh, things. I will add a filter to that because I don't want to see all of the content of the table. I specifically want to see the uh, status that have been returned by the get status from IDOC number. And so I want to insert that status code and you can see here, I'm dynamically building that input to the where clause. Uh, additionally, I saw there was a language uh, column and I want that one to be for English. So I add additional um, query uh, detail there. So I will get the status for the for my IDOC specifically in English and I will get the description for that. So let, let me save that and uh, give it a run. And we'll have the output of this in a few seconds. Oh, you can see it running. Yeah. You can see it running. It has sent all three IDOCs. Okay, I must have made the mistake in my edition. And um, we can see also the schemas have been generated. Now, let me show the bit of the schema. So um, this is an XML payload, and an XML in JSON may not work well by itself. So instead, it gave us um, that base64 encoded content. And my favorite tool for that is to use uh, Notepad++, which is a free tool. So, and it has a bunch of plugins here. I have a JSON, so I can format the JSON. I can see that it provided me four different schemas for different pieces. We ask in particular for the orders uh, schema, that's the, the head schema, and we have this base 
64 content. Um, and we can take that, and again, we have a plugin for base64 decode. Um, and then you can retrieve it, and you can see that you have the schema and the other schema that it refers. So you can then take that, if potentially you would uh, take the name that is suggested for the schema and save it as an XSD. And that would uh, allow you, that would allow you to, to, to save all of the schema and then we, the schema will input each other. So you have the full description of the IDOC. Uh, you can see see here the specific segments that exist in this orders or file. Uh, to give you a little bit of an idea how those work. But just for, for clarification, so in this flow that you have there, where you um, send an, an IDOC and when you then receive some information, that's probably not where you would have this generate schema step in. You would probably do this in a separate um, yes. um, logic app once, generate the schema and then work with the results and send and interact with the SAP system, leveraging the schema that you just have created. Yes, yes, that is very correct. Right? This is typically a design time activity mm -hmm. where um, you generate the schema for the IDOCs or the BAPIs or the IFCs that you want to integrate and that gives you XSD. And then you can load them in your favorite uh, XML editor of choice, be it Perfect. Eclipse, Visual Studio, Notepad++, like uh, I am doing. Uh, you can generate some sample paper and start fill, filling uh, those fields. Uh, you also have uh, native XML capabilities in the uh, logic app where you can do XML validation. You can do transforms, right? If you had another XML document for your purchase order, and you need to convert it into the IDOC schema for the orders of your SAP system, you can create an XSLT and run that in the cloud mm -hmm. to do the conversion as runtime between the schemas so that you get to that uh, payload um, that you need to send to uh, SAP. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here I have another uh, example of the same uh, logic gap where you will be um, sending an IDOC and then we receive that transaction identifier and we ask, hey, what are the IDOCs in that? And as it told us, well, you have IDOC 36055 and so on, the number of that. And then we enumerated, there was only one IDOC number. We said, hey, give me the, uh, the status code for this IDOC number. As it told us, well, status code is 56. And then we read on, went on to read our table and said, hey, read table nice. TDS2. I want a description of that. You can see here it directly inserted that output we got 56 here and asked to have it in English. Um, and with this new command of read sub table, you do have the XML response. So that again, if we wanted, we could um, do a base64 decode. Sorry, here, base64 decode, and you can see that this is an XML payload. Um, by the way, you also have base64 decode uh, built-in function in Logic App if you want to manipulate that uh, mm -hmm. XML on, uh, on the fly. Um, we do also have the output as uh, JSON here. There's a couple of things. There is the metadata, uh, which is written, which says, hey, what you are getting is the field description, and it has a length of 60, and it is the type of character, and what it is is a description of the object. The specific description for uh, status code 56, according to SAP, is IDOC with errors added. So this is because the sample um, IDOC that I'm sending, right, the uh, sender and the receiver partner and so on are not all set up mm -hmm. on the uh, SAP system that I'm using for testing. So the processing actually doesn't work. Now, this is very useful if you do a real integration here, then uh, rather than you send an IDOC, and it always says success because it's a TIFC, it doesn't have a response. You don't really know if the processing has worked. Uh, also, you have a transaction identifier, which you need an ABAP engineer to look uh, what is the IDOC uh, for that so that the, then the SAP application engineer can figure, okay, with this IDOC number, what's the status? You can shortcut all of that process and you can immediately know, hey, the IDOC that I've sent ended up with this status and is it a success or not? so that if you have to reach out to the SAP team for support, you can tell them, hey, I sent you an IDOC and you gave me the IDOC number so-and-so, and this is the status that we have done. I know the status yeah. is not a success. 
could you please look as to what happened to this ad hoc number? This will save you a tremendous amount of time in troubleshooting what's happening. No, fantastic. And I, I think that it was it was really nice to see how um, you just click and um, add certain actions and then some actions have outputs that you can then use in the next actions and you have this drop down functionalities. And I think, yeah, this really shows nicely how at least now for the for the SAP part, how you can connect to the to the SAP systems. And as you said, there are hundreds of other connectors available. So potentially I could now take the the IDOC um, or the results of the IDOC um, that I'm or the responses from SAP take something from this and then send it to another system using one of the other um, actions that are available in, in, in Logic Apps. So this can really help in integrating or connecting different systems. Yeah, and without writing one single line of code, all with just some some icons uh, or some some building blocks that you that you add and move around. Yep, that is the power of Logic Apps. Really nice. Uh, David, one question from from um, somehow uh, tracking the, the history of uh, execution of my logic app. Is there any option that I can bound that with, with uh, application insights and then uh, somehow see the, the, the trace of my execution, what I did last couple of hours or something like that? So you have a built-in history, run history, as well as a trigger history um, mm -hmm. for Logic App as part of the Azure Management Portal. Okay. You can also, when you create your Logic App, you can bind it to an, an, an OMS, um, mm -hmm. an Azure Monitor Log Analysis, and mm -hmm. we will feed uh, data into that. And we do have for uh, Log Analytics, uh, a portal specific for Logic App, an extension specific to Logic App to understand metrics about Logic App, as well as if you're using the B2B capabilities mm -hmm. for like if you're doing AS2, X12, or Edifact, we have um, specific extensions uh, for the log analytics for um, AS2, for, for B2B types of uh, integration. Now, uh, Logic App recently has made available uh, Logic App uh, Anywhere version that runs as part of containers, and uh, that is built on functions. And then you can also do uh, integration with um, the, uh, sorry, I'm, the name escaped the, what you were asking about um, just before. Uh, application insights. Oh, okay. Application yeah, because, insight. because this is a part of application services, and then you can, okay, I get it. Okay, yeah, great. Okay. Yeah, oh, great, mm. very nice. Really great, um, not only introduction, I would say, but but really a, a good insight in, in how we can connect to an SAP system. And as you mentioned in the beginning, there, there are lots of other um, things and uh, there, there can be much more details. So, so maybe in the future, we can have you back again um, on the SAP on Azure YouTube channel, and then maybe we can focus on the on-premises data gateway or on, 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 on the SAP system sending IDOCs um, over to, to Logic Apps. So I'm sure there are so many other scenarios and I know that Logic Apps and especially the SAP connector is, is a loose, used by a lot of our customers already. So I think this is a really, really hot topic that um, a lot of customers are interested in. So I think yes. that was a really, really good um, introduction to the topic. Right. Thank you, Olga. Yeah, it would make sense to spend some time covering the IFC integration for this type of uh, sending a request and getting a response from uh, Logic App or SAP because it's bi-directional. Uh, also looking at the BAPIs where you can uh, explore what are the business objects uh, available in SAP from Logic App. And once you select the business object you want to do, we can show, we can demonstrate how we can automatically list here how the methods that are available for you, so they can do this discovery right there from Logic App of what's available in SAP. Cool. Okay. Great. Yeah, it sounds like we will definitely have you back um, on the show. Great. Okay. Um, Goran, I can see that you're also now um, here. Yeah, yeah, I already have a, a lot of question. Me, I don't know if you already answered because I I was just stuck in another meeting. Um, but maybe uh, if uh, uh, for me it's always helpful. I mean, what would make sense to have a examples of certain stuff 
for me, it's always the easiest way how to uh, try something. And maybe those examples, if they are kind of very um, usable or repeatable by many customers, would be valuable. So maybe you already have it on your GitHub account. I, I, I don't know, maybe you mentioned it, but <laughs> that would be a, a question there. Yeah, so so let me let me uh, do a quick overview of what is on the on the GitHub. Um, this guy, right? So let's go back. So the sample XMLs uh, today we covered the IDOCs, but there's mm -hmm. also the uh, IFCs. Okay. Um, and I demonstrate different type of IFC that the simple ping and the uh, connection. Uh, the connection that uh, allows you to do a, a hello world and get a response back. Right. Um, also, a couple of different ways where you can send tables, right? Um, because, of course, we're talking to a database. So often you have uh, rows of data, and how do you form that uh, into XML? And there is the, 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 uh, the one for sending right to uh, TCP IC, which is sample out of the box from. Uh, SAP, as well as reading the table behind, how does it work right, in XML? That's right. for the uh, IFCs, there are samples posted there. And then for the BAPIs, there are two different ones on uh, the bank object, um, the creating to create a bank, the listing, and the getting other details to demonstrate this kind of a three capabilities of create, query, and then get to a specific one. I think in your GitHub repo, you also have a presentation that uh, talks a little um, in, in more details about some of these scenarios and how to set it up. Yeah. Yep. yep. So, so I think the, that's the, also. This one, you will need to download it. This one also um, shows the XML and explains how some of the different nodes work in that, in that PowerPoint. We, we could cover that on another session. We'll do that. Okay, good. Then I think that's that's it for today. Um, thank you very much, David, for joining us uh, for presenting Logic Apps. Um, as said, I, I hope this was the first in many other um, wow. such videos where you um, show us a little more on Logic Apps and the connection to SAP. Yeah, thank you with this. And I think uh, yeah, that closes our second episode of 2021. Exactly. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.